Promotional mix. The aim of this presentation is to develop your understanding of the promotional mix. And by the end of this presentation, you should be able to identify and assess the purpose of the promotional mix for businesses. Before we start, we must say that the promotional mix is not the marketing mix. You really need to get this clear in your head and you may make a mistake when writing down an answer. So make sure you know that the promotional mix is not the marketing mix. So what actually is the marketing mix? Well, the marketing mix is what some of you will typically have heard of as being talked about the four P's. Now, there are actually more than four P's. However, in reality, some people in the world of marketing argue that the original four P's actually cover many of the new found P's. But you've got your original four P's. So you've got your price. So that's your pricing strategy that fits under that, typically. Then you've got your place. So obviously you're looking at where you sell your product from, and that could be channels of distribution also fit in there, or even the placement of the product within a shop. You've actually got the product itself, which then looks at things like the unique selling point. And then you've got your promotion aspect. And of course, that is one of the aspects where the promotional mix fits in, which we'll look at in more detail in a minute. And those are your original four Ps. Then in addition to that, you've got processes. Now the process talks about effectively what it says. It's the steps that go through that decision and that purchase. So it can be things such as the customer service that you get, or it could be delivery that you get, or it could be the user-friendly experience you get on the internet. Because of course, it's those things that technically add value. And of course, that's why it comes back to product in some aspects and see where the link comes straight away you've got your people now of course this is arguing that people have a massive impact on marketing and selling your products and it's talking about your staff so you know again are you, the experience and the training you give your staff so how well trained are they what do they follow the brand image and do they know about the reputation um, do they show good levels of knowledge and experience do they give good sales support? Those are all aspects which fit in with that P of people. Again, probably you could argue form part of the product and the overall experience. And then lastly, you've got the physical experience. And of course, what that's talking about then is the actual experience the customer gets. So it could be when they walk in your store, do they see a clean, well-decorated, well-presented area? Or is your website clean? Does it, is it dead simple where the customer has to go to, for example, when they log onto your website? It could be the colours that are used or the lighting that's used in the store and all aspects of marketing and branding. But again, that could link in with the place that you choose to sell your product from. And of course, it could be things like, you know, Facebook, bizarrely, like engaging in feedback and getting feedback from the customer because, of course, it's creating that experience and that greater belonging towards the brand and the product. And those make up your seven P's of the marketing mix. But we're going to focus on the promotional mix. Now, the promotional mix is the aspects of the marketing mix that describes the blend of promotional activities that an organization can undertake to achieve their promotional goals. So effectively, we're looking at how does a business promote itself and how can it achieve those goals and those targets that it sets itself to obviously increase its sales and promotion. And typically, we have the following five aspects of the promotional mix. You have advertising, sales promotion, personal selling, public relations, which is sometimes called PR, and direct marketing. And we're going to look at more detail for each area. So let's start with advertising. Advertising is the use of paid for space to communicate products in the prime media with the purpose to persuade and inform. And what we mean by prime media tends to be media that you see all the time, it's in your face. Now, of course, we've got different aspects of advertising. And we've got these five aspects within the advertising area. You've got the moving image. And that includes advertising such as on TV, the cinema, DVDs, YouTube. So basically, it's a visual, well, it says it's a moving image, a video that moves. You've then got your print media, which is more traditional as such. So you've got your newspapers, and they could be national or local, depending on who your target market is. You've got billboards, again, that could be a national campaign or a local campaign. You've got your magazines. You've got your direct mail, that's when they send things to your door, which sometimes is called junk mail, and we'll come back to that later, what that really means. And then you've got your press releases, and that's giving the press information, so it could be about new product launches or things that the company is doing. So telling the press what the organisation or the brand is up to. You then have this thing called ambient methods of advertising, and ambient methods are methods which are tend to be out there. 
they're in your face as such. You see them all the time. So it could be like the back of buses or taxis or trains. But then it can be promotional merchandise like the free pens or the key rings that are given out. They're the things that are quite subtle, but they actually work. They're in, they're in your face when you see them and you go, oh, yes, I remember that. That's that brand. That's what ambient methods are all about. And then you've got the more modern method now. Things are digital methods of advertising, such as the SMS or the text message. Podcasting. You've got blogs and you've got banner adverts on websites and you've even got social media that is now a method. And you can actually pay to advertise, obviously, on social media like Twitter and Facebook will actually let you pay to advertise on there. And, of course, lastly, you've got another traditional method, which is audio advertising, which, of course, is radio and podcasting. Now, looking at that list, you should be able to think, if I ask you the question now, which do you think is the most expensive method of advertising? I'm hoping you could probably work that out. The most expensive tends to be moving image. Typically followed closely between somewhere between print and audio, probably depending on which campaign you choose. Then it would be your ambient advertising, and lastly, it'd be digital advertising. And the big benefit of digital advertising is that it's fairly cheap and it's fairly targeted and effective because you can actually target specific target markets. And that's been one of the level playing fields and probably making it difficult for some organizations, a bit like we're talking about BHS of the news at the moment with the, the threat to go to administration today when this podcast has been recorded, um, about the fact that obviously they, they've they not got a USP at the moment and it's probably easy for their small arrivals to compete these days because there's fewer barriers to entry when it comes to your advertising because you can get online and reach quite a wide audience and especially a younger audience by using some of those digital methods. Okay, another method is, is something called sales promotion. Now the purpose of sales promotion is to provide incentives to the customer with the purpose of obviously stimulating demand for a product or service. And what that really means is getting them to purchase a product. Now, typical methods that can be used to stimulate demand could be a price promotion. So that's like a buy one, get one free. Or, you know, a 99p. Or, obviously, you could have like buy two for one pound. But anything like that is a price promotion. It tends to be an offer that you see. You have coupons where you might get discounts. So Tesco do quite a lot of this, where they send out coupons to all their club card members where you get a discount, so much money off. That's that's a typical one that you see all the time. Competitions. Now, McDonald's are a great one in the news at the moment about that. They use competitions like the Monopoly game, don't they, at the moment, to try and win prizes with there. But that's a, it's, it's a sales promotion method to try and get people to actually purchase from McDonald's. You've got refunds. So I would argue the mobile phone companies are quite good at this one. There are some contracts out there where if you take out a contract, it's £40 a month. But if you send off bill number three, bill number seven, and bill number 12, then you get so much money knocked off. Now, of course, the emphasis is on the customer to actually do that. But you are saying that if you do this, we will give you money back. And then, of course, you've got loyalty incentives, and that's one of the big things that happening at the moment. So you've got lots of companies with club cards, Tesco do it, where they have their, their bonus, their club card bonus, I think it's called, where they up it. But you've got, like, your Boots Advantage card, and that's the same idea there. There's a loyalty bonus for shopping with Boots, effective in the special discounts there. So it makes you feel part of the brand, and you're going to be more willing to spend money and buy products from that brand. You've got this method called personal selling. Now, personal selling tends to be when you try and have an interpersonal reaction between the organization and the customer about selling a product. And typically it's done by the sales functional area. So in a shop, these are the shop staff that you see on the shop floor. Now, typically this happens face to face. That's the most common one that we think of. So somebody will try and sell to you in a shop. In McDonald's, for example, there tend to be a, an option to try and go large, isn't there? In some shops like, for example, Debenhams, they will definitely try and personally sell in some of their aspects of their business and try and increase the sale by, have you thought about this? Um, a lot of shoe shops are exactly that same way, aren't they? They try and increase the purchases to sell extras and adding on extras when you buy a pair of shoes. Some people have it when they knock on your door. Quite annoying, to be honest, in my opinion, but that's trying to be face-to-face -face sales. Then you get telephone sales. Again, this is where they ring you up and they try and make a sale on the telephone. It's getting a little bit more difficult these days, I think, because people are getting fed up of hearing from PPI, for example, and different claims like that. It needs to be more commonplace, but there is still that aspect of people trying to sell on the telephone. You've got email. Some sales take place and transactions take place on email. For example, buying a car, you might be negotiating with the salesman via email. And it, as long as it's a personal email, and it's not a generic email out there, it's still a personal selling method. Just like video and web conferencing would be a method, as long as it's a personal 
approach that happens. Now that tends to be more what they call B2B, business to business transactions. So video web conferences tend to happen when businesses are selling to other businesses, whereas face-to-face -face telephone and email could be what they call B2B, so businesses selling to other businesses, or it could be B2C, where a business sells to a consumer, which is a typical process that most of us think of. We also have this thing called public relations and PR. Now, some people find PR difficult to get into their head. I'm going to try and explain it to you simply. Uh, this is basically a method of promotion that an organisation or a brand, through placing information in the media, will get free, effectively, media coverage. And that could be directly or indirectly. And PR is all about making the most of what your organisation is doing. So talking about the good news stories, typically, what your company does. And you have these things called press releases. And that's information that you give to the press. So you might send out an email to all the, the local journalists that you know, telling them what's happening. And typically, it's written by somebody in marketing who makes it sound really positive. So even if it's a bad news story, it'll still sound positive to give the company the maximum potential. And there's a saying in world marketing that there's no such thing as bad publicity. And that comes from that argument that if you have a really good PR team, they can make anything sound positive. But of course, typical things you see in press releases are like charities, donations that might take place, or if the company is doing well and it's making profits, if it's got a new product range that comes out. And it could be things such as even offering the local paper to do a photo shoot of their, local, their next range. So the paper feels like it's going to get a freebie because it can go along and take some photographs and fill some space. But actually, they're going to get some promotion, the company is, because they'll see how much a product costs. You've got sponsorship that takes place. So sponsorship can be another form of PR. So sponsoring your local football team or your local community group, that can get you PR because you're paying for the sponsorship, but then think about all the indirect media coverage you get as a result of that. I like to think of McDonald's as a good example with their um, football sponsorship. I think of grassroots football for the FA and how they played on that fact. And I think on the news at the moment, even Budweiser are trying the same trick as well, where they, they're claiming that they're putting money into grassroots football. And as a result of that, of course, they're just paying the, the FA for their sponsorship of the FA Cup. But of course, as a result of that, they're getting the benefit from people talking about how in a local paper, Budweiser sponsored this and Budweiser made a donation for that, the same at McDonald's. Or you could have exhibitions. And these are shows that you could go to. Um, one of the news at the moment is about McDonald's, that McDonald's wants to... Um, have an exhibition at every political party's conference. Um, but the Labour Party um, has decided it doesn't want McDonald's there for some reason to promote British farming. Um, that's their own choice. But what's technically happened is that there's been some coverage in the local media and in the national media about this. So as a result of this, you could argue that McDonald's are benefiting from PR because they're talking about McDonald's being banned from going to a Labour Party conference to talk about British farming. And, of course, that tends to typically sound quite good for McDonald's. And, of course, you could probably rest assured McDonald's press releases have made sure that the press have got the information they need to make the story sound positive. Again, coming back to that argument about there's no such thing as negative PR. And then you've got direct marketing. Now, direct marketing is the one that probably starts to frustrate people. Now, I'll cover what it is first. So this is the building of relationship on an individual level between the business and the customer. And that's really important. It's what's called relationship marketing. It's a new buzzword in the world of marketing at the moment about building relationship. Now, it includes this thing called direct mail. And I talked about it earlier, and it's otherwise known as junk mail. Now, marketeers get really annoyed when people talk about the word junk mail because junk mail is what they say is poorly targeted mail. So there's no such thing as junk mail. It's just purely poorly targeted because it's only junk to you because it doesn't interest you. And that means that the marketeers have got their target market wrong and they're wasting their marketing budget. And it's actually direct mail because if you get it right, and it's to the right person, then you're interested in the product and you might buy that product. And typically this is stuff that comes to your letterbox. So it's normally things that you signed up to or mailing list that you signed up to. It could even be when you forgot to tick that little box on a document and it's been you, your name's been sold onto another company then who's going to use you because you fit their target audience hopefully. Of course, if it doesn't fit your audience, it's junk mail. You could have mail order catalogues. So they tend to be a form of direct marketing because they build up a relationship with you. Some catalogue companies are really clever. They send you the exact catalogues that closely match your interests and your shopping habits. So again, a way of building that relationship and trying to make it more personal. And you can have telemarketing. So these can be people who ring you up again because 
you have got an interest in that product. Again, it becomes an annoyance when you've got no interest at all. And again, that's poorly targeted, and that's the way the world of marketing works. But of course, direct marketing is seen as a great way, if you get it right, of increasing the relationship with the brand, with the, the customer, and of course, making more profit in the long term. So what you've now seen is that completes the aspects that make up the promotional mix. And hopefully you've seen that I've explained what each of those aspects comprises of. Remember that an organization will typically use a range of those promotional methods to form what I would call, and marketeers call, a promotional campaign. Now, a promotional campaign typically comprises of those five aspects. So it'll have some form of advertising, some form of sales promotion, some form of personal selling, some form of PR, and some form of diet marketing. And it'll all be planned out in a strategy. And that's the best way to do it for a business because it makes it the chance of success much greater. And of course, it makes your spending of your marketing budget more effective. Now, the best way to try and see if you really understand what we just covered is to try and apply it to an organization. So I've picked an organization in this presentation, and I want you to see if you can think about which aspects of the promotional mix they use, and you can give me some examples from each category. So the company that I've chosen is McDonald's, and I would like you to obviously get a piece of paper, write down advertising, sales promotion, personal selling, public relations, which you talked about being PR and direct marketing, and then I'd like you to try and maybe do it in a spider diagram, draw some lines off each one of those aspects and think, what advertising does McDonald's do? And try and link it. Can you think about if it's ambient or print or is it visual? So think about what they do and try and drag it off there. And sales promotion, what do they use? What personal selling do they use? Public relations do they use? And direct marketing. Try and see what you can do. Try and apply it to McDonald's. You may want to do some research into this. It may be advisable to pause the video now. Okay. Um... You may have many, many more answers, and I don't want to give you all the answers. So what I've tried to do is just give you a few answers to see if you're on the right line to thought. So advertising-wise, McDonald's uses TV, radio, newspapers, billboards, website, many, many others. They certainly use lots, you know, they can get to more detail still. Now, I was thinking about sales promotion. They use the Monopoly game that they do at the moment, but they've got many other ones they use. The buzz ticket coupons. If you get on a buzz locally in my area, on the back of a buzz, it always says about McDonald's and a discount. They've got the saver menu, the pound, is it the 99p menu, I believe it is. But again, they've got loads more. You've probably got many more than that already. Personal selling, I would argue they do that at the counter when they try and make you go large. So again, much more. You've probably got many more ideas are in, just give me some ideas. Um, public relations, I'd argue what we talked about before about the British Farms press release that went out to the press, the football sponsorship of the grassroots football. But again, they've probably got many, many examples of PR out there that you found. And of course... Direct marketing, well, they got text messages and emails to people who sign up to their mailing list and they've taken part in their competitions like Monopoly, so they're building up their database. But again, you've probably got much more. Those are just ideas. I've just given you a few ideas to think, am I on the right lines, am I not? That is a campaign that McDonald's uses, as you can see, so probably more detailed. But it's successful and it works because they all integrate with each other and that's what's really important. That they all follow on to so the monopoly activity for example they advertise it on tv on radio on billboards and the website so when they run that campaign they advertise it the personal selling probably talks about the monopoly the press release that goes out will say that mcdonald's is bringing back monopoly there's probably text messages that went out and emails went out talking about monopoly so they use each one to make sure they create that buzz and build that brand and that's what's critical about successful marketing Okay, that's it. You should now understand what's meant by the term promotional mix. You should be able to assess this for different organizations and consider the reasons why different aspects of promotional mix are used for an organization. Don't forget to subscribe to me at the link below. So click that button down there. Follow me on Twitter. Like the Facebook page. And finally, don't forget to check out the website. It's bbusinessb.co.uk. And until next time, keep buzzing.